Hello everybody, Lawrence Fleming here. Well, it rained all night, so everything is damp. I'm in a dry pavilion. It's the only place I can find that I can sit down. Even my little swing by the river has got mud underneath it, so... You just deal with it. You can't handle what... you. I can't control the weather. You know, God can, but we don't need that much. I'm fine. So he just kind of sees what I can deal with, I guess. I still enjoy doing it, so it doesn't matter. Anyway, anyway my mouth is cold, though, so we're going to have to work on that. We are in the last days. And to be specific, we're in the last days of the last days. <clears throat> now, I call those the end times, but... Technically, it's the last days of the last days because the early writers of the Bible, the New Testament, they mentioned that they were in the last days themselves. And if you figure it's been a couple thousand years and a thousand years is a day, it's only been two days from God's point of view. We may hear a lot of traffic of cars going back and forth. There's some kind of a, a big get together here, a couple hundred people for some event. They've got one area that they've designated for themselves, but they're using most of the park, it looks like. There goes three cars in. Yep. Well, there's a camp right next to me. Is a, a guy came in yesterday with his son, and they were trying to have a nice camp, and they started with their dinner, and it started sprinkling, and I had, they had to head to the tent. Stop for a little bit, they finished their dinner, I think, and then they went back in when it started again. If you haven't done this for a while, it can be tough. And if you really want to have a, a camp that you can work out of, um, where you can have your fire and all that stuff, as a scoutmaster, we used to come in and lay a large tarp out over where we wanted our camp to be, and then haul it up, use ladders, haul it up onto the trees really high. <clears throat> and it would basically cover the entire camp area where we're going to be seated around the campfire and things like that, just in case rain comes. We don't want everybody to have to go into their individual tents when it rains. We want to be able to stay together. So you get a large tent. you got to make sure you have a good, strong rope because you're going to have to pull it between two large trees that are a long distance apart. And then you pull the corners. And if you don't have a tree for the corner, they use a, uh, a pole, a telescoping pole. You fit up in the grommet in that corner, and then you tie it down to the, stake it down to the ground. And I do have a large tent. It works better in the primitive areas, but what I've done is I've got a small tarp. Um, did I say small tent? Small. I had a large. I have a large tarp. I also have a small tarp, and most of the time I prefer the small one because I don't, I don't do campfires. Now, that may change because you guys said you wanted me to cook, so I'm going to work out a schedule on that. The hardest part for me cooking is to have the ingredients readily available, and I don't cook for one person. I'm going to have leftovers for two or three days, so I've got to have uh, everything set up. I'm even thinking of getting a very small refrigerator because uh, I've got electricity everywhere I go. I've got a cooler, and that helps to keep the drinks cool and things like that, but it's uh, it's not set up to really put food in. I can keep my water cold. I can keep my drinks cold in it because it's a cooler, but there's no shelves or anything like that, and it works good for that. But I have a big cooler that's you know set up to keep food in, but I'm going to have to keep ice in it. And you got to understand that when you start using ice, ice melts. When we used to do this as scouts, we had two or three large freezers. Uh, the church is sponsored these, so there'd be a freezer down in the basement full of ice jugs, gallon jugs of, that have water in them. Uh, these would be something that you could do now as a prepping thing. Put one or two, depending on the size of your freezer, jugs of ice or water in your freezer and having them become ice. If your power goes out, 
you transfer it down to the refrigerator and then don't open it very often. But these jugs, you put one jug in a igloo or whatever kind of cooler you got, and it will keep you for the weekend if you're going weekend camping, which is what we did. Now, I'm full-time camping, and I don't have a basement, so I have to buy ice. Ice is three to four bucks a bag, depending on where you get it, and I got to buy it every two or three days. So it's an extra expense I don't like to use. If I can get a small refrigerator, I don't want like a dorm refrigerator. Um, those are too big. I got to go for a mini mini, and then I can plug it in. Uh, then I can keep things like milk and condiments, mayonnaise and things like that. That won't keep very well. I don't like putting them in coolers because you're not 100% sure you've kept the temperature just right all the way uh, for the life of the food. But a refrigerator would be fine. I can transfer it to the cooler on moving day if I need to. And if it's a top loader, it will carry just like a normal cooler. So I'm going to be shopping for one of those. Anyhow, we're in the last days, and we know we're in the last days, and for people who say we're not, they're denying the Bible. Now, if they're denying the Bible, they're either an atheist or another religion who doesn't believe in it, in which case, tell them who you are. If they pique any interest at all, talk to them. If not, Wipe the dust from your feet and move on. I've tried talking to a couple of people here recently, and it's just, you know, you can't convince somebody if they've already been programmed to think otherwise. And all they do is start spreading their lies, and I don't want their lies being propagated on my, on my page. So unfortunately, I just block them and go on. I spend the time with those of you that are believers and those of you that are curious and want to know. I will cover pretty much everything in my videos. This is another sales pitch. <clears throat> so if I don't talk about it in the current video, it doesn't mean I don't know anything about it. It doesn't mean that I'm not capable of talking about it. I get some people in that want to give me their college dissertation in my comments on something that I'm not talking about. And inevitably, there's something wrong in it. So you've got to be careful. I like verses of, you know, the best thing you can do is to tell me you like something, tell me you're uh, impacted by something. If I'm talking about love and you've got a verse about love, drop it in there. That's the proper way to use the chat here. But not try to come in and indoctrinate all my subscribers and your belief because that's not what this channel is about. If you got that much to say, go get your own channel. And if you have your own, then stay on it. Okay. I know, I, did, I don't get angry with these people. I just shake my head and, and say goodbye. All right. We're in the last days. And we know we're in the last days because even the uh, New Testament writers use those terms. <clears throat> I think you can find the last days over a hundred times in the Bible. And I'll get to one very specific one in Hebrews, but I want to kind of read some of the other stuff. So I'm going to go to uh, 2 Timothy 3, and I'm going to read 1 through 5, I think. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, Boasters, proud, blasphemers, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control. You don't want to be part of this group at all. Uh, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God having a form of godliness but denying its power. There are so many offshoots of Christianity that are no longer Christian anymore. They may think they are. And from such people, turn away. And that's what I do. I try. One comment, and if they 
don't agree, that's it. Somebody else will have to reach them. Somebody from within their own faith that finds Christ will come back and tell them, you're in the wrong faith. This is where the truth is. That's what they need to hear. But someone's going to have to do that from their own faith who was saved. So if you know someone like that, if you're ex-Mormon or whatever, and you see someone who is a Mormon, you're going to know how to talk to them. Okay. Okay, uh, verse 6. For of this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible, gullible women, loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Okay, that's in Second Timothy. So they know about, you know, the last days of what things are coming. And they were told that they were in the last days. We'll get to that in a bit. But, you know, the last days are a long time. Now, 2,000 years, a year is it? Did I say this already? I don't know. I've already, I, as I do this stuff, I sometimes write notes and I don't remember if I talk about it. So if I did, I'm sorry. But 2,000 years, day is as 1,000 years. For God, it's only been two days. So we're okay. But we're about ready to have the third day, and the third day is not a nice one. Okay, um, let's go to Second Peter. Where is that? Three, three through four. Beloved, um, I'm going to start in verse one. Beloved, I now write to you the primary key to studying the Bible is context. You can pull the verse out. Satan did when he was tempting Jesus. You can pull the verse out and get it to be twisted for your purpose. Get the context. Uh, beloved, I now write you the second epistle. We're in Second Peter. In both of which I stirred uh, up your pure minds by way of reminder that you may be mindful of the words which, are, which were spoken before by the holy prophets, and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord uh, and Savior. Knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days. So he's reminding them of things. The last days are in the Old Testament and the New Testament. I didn't write it down. There's one in Daniel that talks about it. Well, in Daniel, he's told to close up this book and tell the last days. But there's a couple of others, other ones in there, but I didn't write them down. Um, in the last days, walking according to their own lusts and saying, where is the promise of his coming? So, you said we're going to get raptured. Where, are, where is it? Where's the rapture? Where's the second coming? Where, where is Christ? I don't see him in this world. This is an ugly world. This isn't. Where's God at? You're going to get that. You can want to quote them these verses, throw it right back in their face, but it won't do any good. They've closed their mind. God says he will close people's minds and lead them to believe the lie. Not everybody's name is in the book of life. If your name is in the book of life, God will try to, try to reach you, try to help you. If it's not, the whole world has been destroyed before. Once with a flood, and we're in the days like that, days of Noah, where they wouldn't listen. They're going about their business as normal, doing all their things that they shouldn't be doing, scoffing at Noah. It took him a hundred years to build the ark. You don't think he got a few scoffs out of that? <clears throat> okay, where's the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this they willfully forget that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of water by which the world that we existed perished being flooded by water. But the heavens of the earth which are now preserved by the same word are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. The rainbow is the promised covenant 
reminder that he won't flood the earth again. But he will use fire. But, uh, beloved, do not forget this one thing, that the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. I'm getting ahead of myself, unfortunately. I already covered that. Okay. Um, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That's why it's taking time. He's not forgetful. He's not slothful. He's loving and doesn't want anyone to perish. Okay, we're going to go to a familiar chapter. We're going to go to Matthew 24. The Olivet Discourse is covered in that. But we're going to go to 14... Okay, where are we? I'm going to start back in... Uh, let's see, I'm going to start back in 10. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. God, we're in those times. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. Be careful who you listen to. With me or anybody else you listen to, if we're giving you verses, look them up. Follow along. Make sure that we're telling you the truth. And be careful, because Satan will have a little bit of truth in amongst his lies. The Antichrist is going to be so good that it says that he will deceive everyone and almost the elect. And somebody that's on the edge... He might deceive. He's going to look and appear just like Jesus. He may not look like him. I'm not talking about that. But his, his speech, his mannerism, everything about him is going to be so soothing or promoting. I don't know what kind of a character he's going to be. But people are going to listen to him and want to follow him. He's going to have charisma, I guess is the word I'm looking for. Okay. Many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, it's everywhere, uh, the love of many will grow cold. The apostasy, we're in that. But he who endures till the end shall be saved. Don't let it distract you. Don't let it get your spirit down. We're promised this. This is red letter. This is Jesus talking. He's telling us about this. He knows about it. He's not going to abandon us to it. Don't worry. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. We are so close to being able to preach around the world. Our satellite system that's going up now, SpaceX, is covering the whole world. There will be no reason for anybody to not hear the word. Now, we're told that the desire for God is in everybody. So if there's an aborigine in Australia that's never heard the Bible or someone in South America or any place who's never heard the Bible, they still have a lust for God. It's built into us. We used to be connected and we got disconnected by Adam. So that nature is there. God can speak to somebody like that. He came to Noah. He came to Abram. And their righteous, their, their goodness and their faith in God was considered righteousness. So you don't have to hear the Bible, but he wants everybody to hear it. And it says it's going to go around the world. It also says in these last times, people are going to go to and fro. We can fly anywhere in the world now and be there in a day, pretty much. Some flights might take, you know, a full day, but 24 hours, but you can get there pretty much in a day. And if you have the money and want to charter a flight, you can go pretty much anywhere in the world, even if there's not a flight there. 
there's no limit to where we can travel now. And it says knowledge will abound. We keep increasing our numbers, you know, megabyte, gigabyte, terabyte, petabyte. The only problem with the, with, the, with the peta number is when you put it into a file, you get a pedophile. Okay, sorry for the geek humor. Okay, they're talking about these things all the time in the Bible, the last days. Now, I just want to turn over to Hebrew, book of Hebrews. My bookmark's organized. Okay, we're going to look at this. Uh, I'm in verse 1 of Hebrews. God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets. We've got all the books of the prophets in here, the main ones that are worthy of having in the Bible. Um, as in these last days spoken to us by his Son. We're talking about in the time of Jesus. And he's saying, in these last days. So they considered the time of Jesus last days. There are people who consider that half of the 70th day of Daniel took place during the time of Jesus. And they've got some valid arguments. It's possible. The keynote is that it doesn't matter. We're going to get out before the bad stuff happens, and that's the key. Okay. Um, The son whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds. Jesus made the worlds. That's why he's first and the last. He's been there from the beginning. Who being the brightest of his glory in the express image of his person and upholding all things in the word of his power. When he hath by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand, of the majesty on high, God, having become so much better than the angels as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. So Jesus earned the right to sit by the Father. And he showed us that we can do everything. He said, you can do all these things that I do, plus more, if it's in the will of God to do. So, the last days is right there in the New Testament. And it's talked about throughout the Bible. The prophets talk about the last days. Daniel, like I said, talked about it a couple times. We are there. We know pretty much everything that's going to happen for the rest of life on earth. We have a Bible that tells us all the things that are going to happen. Revelation, the book of Revelation, is pretty much summarizing in their visions everything that the prophets mentioned. Matthew in 24 and 25 is basically going into the beginning of that, that time frame. Matthew talks about the sun and moon turning dark. Well, sex seal. So he's given us a preview of the book of Revelation. And the book of Revelation is written from Jesus to John. God gave it to Jesus. Jesus gave it to John. So it's a hand-me-down book. <laughs> Anyhow, we don't need to be afraid. We need to be happy and going about our business. Ugh, wind's starting to blow a little bit. When it's cold, it doesn't take much of a wind. And I don't need these when I'm not reading. We need to do two things. Survive and tell the world about Jesus. Those are the only two things you need to do. So that's why I tell you to do some basic prepping. Don't buy 10 years worth of stuff. We don't have that much time. Like I said, we know everything that's going to happen. The only thing that we don't know the only thing that we don't know is the start. There's a bunch of people running around. It looks like I'm 
and they got a little kid and they're coming to the play yard. So I guess I'm going to be wrapping this up here shortly. I'm actually, I'm going to probably just cut it and I'll continue when they go by. Okay, I'm back. The rest of the park is crazy. This is relative solitude. These people that were here were just taking their kid to the play on the play yards, but they eventually realized they had to get back and join the group. Okay, I am going to go ahead and give you something out of Daniel. So I am turning to Daniel 10. I'm actually going to start with verse 10. Um, we're going to get down to, I think, 14 or 15. Anyhow, 10.10 10 of Daniel. Suddenly a hand touched me, which made me tremble on my knees and my palms and my hands. And he said to me, O Daniel, man greatly beloved, understand the words that, you, that uh, I speak to you and stand upright, for I have been sent to you. While he was speaking this word to me, I stood trembling. So these guys were important people of the past, but they could tremble in the presence of God or his messengers. And they were messengers themselves. So, so if you see something, just be strong. Then he said to me, do not fear. God, that's in the Bible so many times. As Christians, we're never to fear. Do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before God, your words were heard. I have, become, I have come because of your words. But the prince of the king of Persia withstood me 21 days. And behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. For I had been left alone there with the kings of Persia. Now I have come to make you understand what will happen to your people in the latter days. For the vision refers to many days yet to come. So this is, Daniel is going to get this full vision of things that are going to happen. Remember, he's got the, you know, 70 days of Daniel. 70 heptads. We use dozen. Well, they use heptads for sevens as opposed to twelve. Okay. And then I'd mentioned this already. Uh, do I want to start back? Uh, let's go to the last chapter, 12. At that time, Michael shall stand up, the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people. And there should be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation. Even to that time, at the time your people shall be delivered. Everyone is, who is found written in the book, and many who uh, are asleep in the dust of the earth shall wake. So to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightest of the filament. And those who turn uh, many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. But you, Daniel... Shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. We've talked about that. So, we know that they are all looking towards the end times. Towards the last days, as they're called. This isn't something that just come across God. This isn't the world that is falling apart that he has no control over. He's, de he's describing every step of the failure of, of mankind here. And he's telling people, don't worry about it. I already know about it. I knew about it when I created everything. So that's one thing that we can't understand because we don't have this ability. God is omnipresent. Satan is not, so he has to have help. But God is omnipresent. When he says, I'm the first and the last, he's looking down at the timeline. He created everything all the way from the beginning to the end. He knows exactly where we are in this timeline. I'm not talking about a timeline that somebody might draw up on a blackboard. 
or a whiteboard. This is God's timeline, and we can't change it. And God's not going to change it because he laid it out for a purpose. Everything is happening that God knows is going to happen, expects to happen, and he has a response for everything that's happening. And he knows exactly where a tree is going to fall, and he won't put you at the base where that tree is going to fall so that you will get hurt. He knows everything. If you're in traffic and it's going slow and you're trying to speed up and you can't speed up for some reason, just relax. One, you're going to get there on God's time. Two, he may have slowed you down for a reason. One, there might be an accident on the road and he wants to slow you down so you don't get there and be part of it. It may also be that you need to be a little late to your appointment. This term called fashionably late. You know, if you're late, you're going to get the most attention when you come in. There's different reasons, and you don't know. God doesn't tell us everything because it's not, it's not important. Besides, there are infinite number of things that God's not telling us, and our brains can't handle it. Trust him. Believe me, he knows what he's doing. Okay, so the thing that we're waiting for, that everybody, all Christians are waiting for, is the rapture. We are not supposed to be here when the Antichrist is here. Because we could stop him. If we were here and the Antichrist was, you know, he is here and he's alive, but he's not, he's not known. We don't know who he is. But if we knew he was the Antichrist, if he already had the spirit of the Pollyon, if he is already doing his thing, we could just pray to God and God would take care of him and he would be stopped. It's not supposed to happen that way. He's supposed to torment the earth. It's called shaking somebody by the shoulders to tell them, wake up. There's a free gift for you, and you just have to accept it. Stop being stubborn. He's doing all this stuff for the non-believers. He's not doing it for us. We're already believers. He's doing this so that not one person will perish. He's making life progressively worse. There are some who are sitting on the fence. He's going to knock them off the fence. He's doing this to save people. So don't pray that it stops. Get the message out and save those that you can. You know, you're not saving, but the Spirit of God will save people. You're taking the message to the world. Get it out there now while there's time so they can get the first bus. There will be two more raptures, one in the middle and one at the end. We don't want people to have to wait for those because it's going to get worse. They still don't need to be afraid. But the harlot will have the blood of Christians on her. And we don't want anybody to have to go through that. The rapture is very soon. It, but the problem with the rapture is it's been imminent since Paul's time. Paul was waiting on it. That's 2,000 years ago, but two days for God. It's still imminent. We're told to be ready. So they've been told to be ready for 2,000 years for the first rapture before the seals get opened up, before the Antichrist is here. Revelation 12. We've already seen the sign, but these things are not linear. I told you all these vignettes, the seals, are a vision from the beginning to the end of the 70th day or whatever whatever the time frame is. The same with the trumpets. Revelation 12 is the same thing. Those things are not necessarily going to happen, you know, right after. It's been five years since the Revelation 12 sign. Do we got to wait two more years? I don't know. But we're already seeing everything set up. That's what you've got to understand. All the stuff that's happening in the world now is because... The chessboard, and I like to use the chessboard, is being set up. You can keep moving in a 
defensive mode when you're setting up the chessboard. You're merely setting up the play field to start the fighting from. You're not fighting yet. The battle hasn't begun. You're, you're claiming territory when you're setting up the board. And then at some point in time, you go off in one of your pre-programmed attacks that you know how to do, and hopefully your opponent doesn't. You can actually win the game of chess in just a, a handful of moves. It's called fool's mate. Look it up. You can win that game. So if you're playing with somebody who doesn't know, look up fool's mate if you want to win. But God knows that it's being set up. And at some point in time, they're going to reach a point where they can't move without an offensive plan. They're establishing territory. They're setting everything up. We're getting digital currency ready. And it's going to have to be up and running before the Antichrist can come in and claim, you know, you can't buy or sell without the mark. It has to be up and running. And all other options have to be gone. Believe me, Charles Squab, and I'm going to mispronounce his name on purpose, one, because I'm picking fun at him, and two, the filters may not catch it. He's right out of the same playbook as Hitler. He is German. His father had a munitions factory for World War II for the Germans. Everything he's doing is right out of the standard playbook. They won't teach that in history because then you could stop them. The teachers aren't at fault. It's those that are setting the curriculum. And frankly, Biden's not at fault. It's those that are puppeting him. He doesn't have enough of a mind left to think. They're telling him. And they're using teleprompters. Pray for our leaders. Pray for people that are being misled by this one world group. It's important that even they have the opportunity to be saved. Pray for everybody. Pray for your enemies. If you can convert an enemy, you can make a friend. All right, that's enough. We need to basically know that we're in the last days. We need to know that we're not to be afraid. And we need to know that Jesus, God, is in complete control. Don't worry about it. Pray that God's will will be done. That's in our daily prayer. He will take care of everything. Now, if you've got somebody who's sick, if you've got somebody who's not a Christian, pray for them. That's what we can still pray for people. Just don't pray that the world changes. Pray that people change. Okay, till we meet in the clouds, God bless.